are. And I am thrilled to see so many people have been with us for the last four in a row. Um, it's just a wonderful opportunity for all of us to connect and learn together. And so thank you for taking the time to be here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know I see a lot of people still arriving, but uh, just as a reminder that this is being recorded. And if you missed any part of this or you know people who would like to view it at a later time, uh, it will be available on our YouTube channel. So we have an amazing uh, day ahead of us. Uh, to start off, my name is Dave Miller. For those of you who are new, I am the program director at the Alliance. And um, we are going to be talking about the USDA uh, food assistance program that is newly available. And we're going to have Terry Lang, who's going to be speaking about um, the Delta Hub and the Washington County Community Foundation. So lots of great things to cover today. Um, but before we get started, I want to acknowledge um, that there have been a lot of lives lost, both to coronavirus and to our recent storms. And so I would like for us to go ahead and take a second of a moment of silence to acknowledge the lives that have been lost. Okay, um, with that, as a reminder, we always say this at the beginning of each webinar, um, this is a trying time for a lot of people. Um, if you know of individuals who are struggling with their uh, emotional uh, well-being, I will share in the chat a link to uh, NAMI, which is a mental health resource. Um, they are a wonderful uh, organization who is supporting our communities through this very trying time. Um, so I will share that in just a moment. Uh, as also a reminder, I'm going to share in the chat, uh, and as you received in your, your email, uh, we have our weekly webinar resource um, uh, archive uh, on Google Drive, which is publicly available. We have hosted a, a number of our documents and resources from past presenters, as well as what the Alliance has created, including our COVID-19 resource guide. Um, so definitely take a moment, check out what's there, and feel free to, to pull and share um, anything that might be of value to you or your organization. Um, uh, as you probably have noticed, you're, you've been muted and your webcams are uh, not being able to be shared. There will be time throughout the webinar for you to ask questions. Um, so bear, bear with us, but we want to make sure that we um, we don't have any background interference. And so, um, like I said, there will be time later to share. With that though, uh, I do wanna introduce Andy Wilson. He is with ESF 11 um, and uh, is the coordinator there and um, theme is region four. And this might sound familiar last week, Caitlin Brooking um, at Volunteer Mississippi was talking about ESF six. Um, and so we're, we're all getting a little bit of introduction to the ESF system, um, but uh, he's going to be talking about, like I said, the food assistance program that just became available um, that many of you probably have heard about in the news. Um, and then Terry Lane, the executive director at the Community Foundation of Washington County and the hub director uh, for the Delta Hub is going to be speaking about what's going on there. So a wonderful webinar ahead of us. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Andy and uh, hear about the amazing things going on. Oops, Andy, let me make sure that you are unmuted there. Let's see. Andy, are you able to uh, let's see, hold on one second, sorry. Let's see. Andy, what's your caller number on your phone?
see if you'll just enter that in the chat there, Andy. We'll go ahead and make sure we get you unmuted. It's just a second. Andy, while we're working on that, um, why don't we go ahead and, and have uh, Terry, if you want to go first, um, and we'll we'll work on getting Andy taken care of there. So Terry, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Dave. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everybody. My name is Terry Lane. For those that don't know me, and I am blessed to be the executive director of the Community Foundation of Washington County. The Delta Volunteer Hub is a program under our umbrella, and I have also been serving as that director since October when our previous director um, left our organization, and we have been diligently searching since that time. So I'm going to talk kind of from both sides of the coin as I work in both of those roles simultaneously. So in 2012, community leaders here in Washington County came together, as at that time we were the largest county not currently served by a community foundation. And as of today, we are one of seven in the network of community foundations across the state. We are by far the youngest and by far the smallest, um, but we are grateful to all of our partner of community foundations who have led us and mentored us and shared their expertise with us since my arrival in 2014. We consider ourselves both sides, both a charity and a philanthropy organization. We do grant making like all community foundations do, but we also serve boots on the ground with our own scope of programming here in Washington County that centers around three pillars, early childhood education, workforce development, and downtown revitalization. As you can imagine, a lot of that work right now is currently on hold given the current pandemic. And we have significantly shifted our resources and capacity to fill a voided space in our county of how to best help our residents recover and receive the immediate assistance that they need, very similar to the other foundations across our state. We have an asset base of 2.2 million and 56 individual funds under our umbrella. Um, in the last five years, we've grown exponentially. So we're, we're really proud of those numbers serving down here in the Mississippi Delta. But Dave asked me today to talk about the work that we've been doing as it relates to COVID relief and how we've collaborated with local, regional, and statewide organizations through the hub, through the foundation, to do what needed to be done to help our residents immediately in the wake of this crisis. So like many out there, we stepped up and created the COVID-19 Community Relief Fund under our umbrella. Our foundation stepped up with a $10,000 match to match dollar for dollar every donation from private or corporate entities, faith-based organizations, and others to help us actually double that money to be able to have 20,000 to spend on a newly created rapid response mini grant application process. Our goal was to stay in our lane and to provide the needing funding and resources to the groups that were actually on the front line doing the service. Not a surprise to you guys that about 90% of our dollars so far have gone to serve our soup kitchen and our food pantries right here in Washington County. We have awarded over $14,000 in rapid response grants in the last three weeks. And we are continuing to raise more money to get to our match and even beyond that. Um, we, unlike many, sort of scratch for our dollars. Maybe some of you can appreciate what that looks like. Um, but this weekend, we actually launched our new program called Curbside Cameras. And it was a way for our foundation to step up and support our restaurants and our small businesses here in Washington County 
by encouraging folks to take pictures and tag us at curbside cameras as they did their delivery or curbside business. And for each 25 photos that are posted, we are actually getting $250 from anonymous donors up to right now we have 2,500 that actually committed. So we're really proud that at the end of this, not only have we supported our small businesses and helped them in their recovery, but we'll have hopefully at the end of the day, 5,000 more to give out to our local nonprofits and faith-based organizations. So sometimes we come up with little innovative things to keep everybody excited and to keep people thinking about it. Um, as you know, at this stage, sometimes charitable giving is, is a little more challenging, so you have to make it fun. So one of the things we're most proud of is what we've done as it relates to combining the efforts of the Delta Volunteer Hub with volunteer recruitment. With the funding that we've provided to our local nonprofits, and then being able to add in incredible statewide organizations like Martha Allen with Extra Table and Cassandra Mowgli with the Mississippi Food Network to be able to also support them at a statewide level in the provision of additional food resources to our local pantries and nonprofits here. So one example of that that has been amazing, not only have we funded those organizations to provide additional food here, but we have actually for the last three weeks sent volunteers down to Jackson to load up incredible fresh food through Extra Table to bring that right back here to our food pantries and our soup kitchen. Our groups here have seen an increase of 169% since the last three weeks. So they are really stretched beyond their means. They are stretched in some cases beyond their capacity and are not turning folks away who are new to their soup kitchens or their food pantries. So they not only need the extra funding to purchase additional food, but the food we've been able to provide through Extra Table has been an extra blessing through our volunteers. And then being able to actually provide additional volunteers to help them pack boxes, distribute boxes. Yesterday, they were separating out grapefruits with the Mississippi Food Network because a lot of our volunteers, again, no surprise to you guys, are over 65. So they are in the high risk category. And a couple of our food pantries were on the verge of closing their doors because they didn't have the needed volunteers to actually do the programming and to keep up with the existing volume and the increasing volume. So we were very pleased to be able to step into that space, not only through the Delta Volunteer Hub, but through the Community Foundation of Washington County as well. So the connectivity between our foundation, the Delta Volunteer Hub, and now what is a growing network of local, regional, and statewide nonprofits has allowed us to keep up with that increase. And we are continuing to look for new and innovative ways to do that. We've just developed a partnership with Mississippi Food Network to bring in 500 family food boxes to distribute here in Washington County through our partner organizations. And we are funding that scope of work directly with Mississippi Food Network. Before this time, I would not say I knew a whole lot about food pantries in Washington County and Greenville, Mississippi and Leland, but now we do. We have granted a faith-based organization who is actually doing a pop-up pantry in Hollandale, Mississippi this Saturday, which is an area that does not have a solidified food distribution mechanism, no food pantry there. Those folks are having to travel, and in the Mississippi Delta, in many cases, that causes a lot of challenges for folks. So we're very excited to have stepped into the space and do this work. In a conversation earlier this week with my friend and your friend, Martha Allen, with Extra Table, 14,000 pounds of food have been delivered to Washington County through the Delta Volunteer Hub and the volunteers that have been 
so gracious with their time over the last three weeks. And that's a pretty significant number. I've never seen so many cabbages and potatoes in my entire life that were in the back of my son's pickup truck. So it's unusual times and it's unprecedented times. And I know all of you are doing exactly what we are, which is stepping into very unfamiliar spaces to do the work that needs to be done for your communities. We still have our mini grants available through the Community Foundation of Washington County. So if you're an organization out there who is doing work around COVID-19, please reach out to me. We are very happy to have additional partnership conversations and are having those on a daily basis. When I talked to Dave earlier this week, we all talk about the challenges and we talk about the obstacles and we talk about the barriers. But I think the thing that resonated with me the most earlier this week is what's going to come out of this. I've made friends and contacts all around the state and in my own community, people that are doing amazing charitable work who we did not know we weren't necessarily doing work around food provision. And so now these, we talk every day. We have statewide connections. We talk every day. And these relationships, these connections are going to stay in place long into the future. And the bright side of all of this is it has given all of us a chance to shine in our communities and to do what's needed and to be innovative and creative in the way we serve the most at risk and vulnerable in our own communities and counties. It gives us a chance to blow our horn. And in many cases, charity and philanthropy don't like to do that. We like to talk about our clients and we like to talk about statistics. We like to talk about how big our assets are, but we don't ever want to say, we're the reason this happened. We're the reason people got fed today. We're the reason that 14,000 pounds of food came to Washington County because we stepped into an unfamiliar space with partners that we've just met and are doing some really extraordinary things across the state of Mississippi. My counterparts in the Hub Network and at Volunteer Mississippi and at the Alliance are doing a yeoman's work. And this is truly our chance to shine and be able to show the state and the country exactly who we are and what we can do in the state of Mississippi. And I think that is something, even in these difficult times, that we should all be really proud of. And it will give us a chance to blow our own horn and talk about what we did in these unprecedented times to really make a difference for the people that we're serving each and every day. And I'm happy to take any of your questions. I was not doing my timer, so Dave, how did I do? You're perfect. Uh, thank you. Ah. And I couldn't agree with you more. I, it is, while it's a very challenging time and there are a lot of stories um, that, that you know, hurt the heart and the mind, um, it is also incredible to see how many organizations have come together um, and people for that matter, to do incredible work, sometimes things they never planned to be doing or thought of doing, and the Community Foundation and the Delta Hub are an incredible example. Um, and so thank you for the hard work that you are doing. Um, and you know, may another 14,000 pounds come to your, your son's pickup truck soon. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and open the floor for everybody um if you would like to um to ask any questions um if you will um pop that in the chat and we'll go ahead and and uh, cover those i either did really well or really bad <laughs> Very well. Um, let's see here. I'll give it another second for any questions. 
And you guys can certainly reach out to me um, through the Community Foundation. Um, I'll put my email in the chat box if you have any questions and my personal cell number since like you guys were working remotely. Um, and certainly you can follow deltavolunteerhub.org, which is our Delta Volunteer Hub platform, um, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at the Community Foundation of Washington County, or and actually at the Delta Volunteer Hub. Wonderful. Thank you, Terry. Um, oh, let's see here. Um, hey, can you hear me? This uh -huh. is Martha Allen with Extra Table. So Terry and I, I was the, one of the organizations <laughs> referenced working closely with. And um, if anybody needs contact for us, Terry can, of course, share it or extratable.org and um, or call my seller, my office, follow us on Facebook and social media. But we exist to put food into the hands of um, food pantries and soup kitchens. So if anybody isn't aware of our work or our services, please contact me. Um, we love new partners and love getting food into um, the hands of our hungry neighbors here in Mississippi. So based out of Hattiesburg, serve statewide. Wonderful. Thank you for, for hopping in and sharing that. And thank you for all the work that you are doing. I have heard, I can't even tell you how many times about Extra Table in the last month. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that's a beautiful segue. So Andy, um, why don't we, I don't see any questions coming in. Um, so Andy, if you want to take the floor and let's see if we can get, get you heard this time. Are you able to hear me now? All right, perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Uh, one, uh, I want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to uh, provide some information to you on our new program. Um, it is new, and so we're going to have some growing pains, but we will work through it. Uh, two, the technical difficulties earlier were all on me. Uh, this is the first time I've used this forum for a uh, video conference, and I've learned more with video conferencing the last few weeks than I care to admit to. Um, but we'll make it happen. So as most of you are aware, uh, last Friday, the USDA announced uh, the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program. Uh, this program is going to incorporate two aspects. One would be a direct support to farmers and ranchers to try to bolster that uh, so those producers um, don't suffer any more than they already have between weather events uh, and you know the last couple things we've had, they've been hit pretty hard. The second part of this uh, is more relevant for you is the purchase and distribution program. Um, through this program, uh, USDA intends to spend up to $3 billion on fresh produce, dairy, and meat products to provide uh, a selection uh, to the food banks, faith-based organizations, and any other organizations that are involved with feeding um, for you to be able to hand out to those that are in need. Um, the intent is to bring together producers and distributors uh, who have, for lack of a better term, surplus products, uh, things they're not able to get to market because of reduced demands, uh, to those organizations that are in need. Um, as I said, it's going to be, uh, they're, they're going to use pre-approved boxes. Uh, they'll have uh, produce in a box, fruits and vegetables. Uh, there will be a dairy products box, so cheese products, that type of thing. Um, they're intending to provide a, a meat product box to include uh, pork, uh, poultry, uh, bison, and some other things. I didn't specifically hear cattle, but I'm sure that will be in there. Uh, and then there will be a mixed box or, or a combination of box with that. Um, USDA intends that this is a 100% uh, U.S. farmer, U.S. producer supported uh, endeavor. Um, so all agricultural products will come from your local communities. Uh, they won't, we will not be bringing anything from out of country. Uh, the way this is going to be executed is through the government contracting system. Um, having worked with that, uh, it can be cumbersome, but they do have a timeline now. Uh, the tomorrow morning or tomorrow sometime they're supposed to send out the bids to the vendors uh, or send out the solicitation for the bids it's to the vendors. Address, it just put Martha Allen okay and it's 1201 Adeline A D E L I someone has a uh, someone has an open microphone and that's had a
All right, thank you. Um, so tomorrow, uh, the solicitation for bids will go out to the vendors. They'll have uh, one week to generate their responses and uh, get their bids back into USDA. Uh, it'll be another week uh, for review uh, by uh, USDA on those bids, and they are expecting to award those bids by May 8th. Um, one week following the award of a bid, uh, delivery of products should be able to take place. Uh, and then this is right now scheduled to last through uh, the end of the year, and I'm sure that's going to be as needed and will be evaluated, reevaluated as things move along. Um, a lot of questions have come up out of it because this is a new program. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of coordinating instructions that have come along with that. Uh, the biggest one is how it's going to be administered uh, within the states. Um, uh, Agricultural Marketing Services, the department's running this, uh, is running it from their end through the seven regional uh, offices uh, that FNS uses. Uh, I'm not saying that FNS is administering the program, but they're using the same breakdown. So there's going to be some overlap between what you these the traditional FEMA regions and the uh, regions that are being used for the administration of the program. But with that, uh, there's nothing nothing else has been sent out uh, telling the states how it's going to be administered uh, once they get the bids awarded. So the coordination part of that is going to be important that you continue to talk with your local emergency management agencies at the county level, that information is being relayed up to uh, state agencies. Uh, most of you guys, I think, deal with uh, ESF-6 for that. Um, continue to identify your needs uh, for what you need and ensure that your communication is constant, consistent, uh, so we can work through this. I think that's going to be the, the, the linchpin to all this is the uh, communication that needs to take part um, to ensure that, you know, everyone's needs are addressed or identified and they continue to move forward and revise and you know revise the program uh, as it continues to move down the road. Um, there is a website that uh, vendors can go to to register. Uh, I'm not quite certain how that information is being put out other than through USDA sources, uh, but I will find out. Uh, but there is also a uh, organizational mailbox, um, and it's on the sheet that. Uh, David sent out or will send out. I'll give that to you now. It's all one word: USDA Food Box Distribution Program at USDA.gov. And please feel free to send any and all questions that you have uh, to that mailbox. Um, and then we'll continue to try to sort things out and get additional details as we move forward. Um, as I said, this is going to be done through a contract process. Uh, it, this timeline, uh, I think, is fluid, um, but uh, we will make it work one way or another. And uh, with that, uh, do we have any questions? Feel free to, you should be able to unmute yourself if you have any questions. Just please uh, be cautious of uh, any background noise. And if you are not speaking, if you will uh, go back on mute, please. Okay, um, let's see here. Andy, will this effort be coordinated through the local EMA similar to MEMA grant funding? I'm inclined to say yes. Uh, don't quote me on that just yet until I get additional information. But because of the relationship between, you know, the organizations that you guys represent and, you know, the counties and the state, uh, I think they're going to have to rely on that for that coordination. Um, I would be surprised if it's bypassed in some way. I can't imagine how it would be, but I've not got confirmation on that yet. But I think that's what's going to happen. 
Does that answer your question? Let's see here. While we're waiting for a response, uh, again, feel free to unmute yourself or enter questions into the chat box and we'll go ahead and get those answered by Andy. And just to reiterate, um, as Andy said, uh, the document that you're looking at now is um, uh, is available to everybody through our, our resource archive. Um, I sent out the link in the chat just a second ago um, and it is available um in the um in the email the webinar reminder um so you all should be able to to receive that um let's see here okay I see uh, Nancy mentioned um, uh, you might want to check out the Mississippi Humanities Council. Um, they are they have some resources as well, um, not necessarily with food, but there's a lot of organizations um, who are going to be helping out, and we're going to have more presenters on in the future with additional resources. Um, uh, so the councils, the Art Council and the Humanities Council, will be here actually next week. Anybody else? Admin has asked that you unmute them. Yeah, they should be unmuted now. They'll be able to unmute. I think there might be an issue with their audio. They should have the ability to. Let's see. So with that. Um, hey, Dave, I've got a question. This is Gary Matthews. Yeah. Hey, Gary. Um, hey, uh, good morning. Um, you know, uh, Thank you, um, first of all, for making me super crazy hungry. Um, but uh, so I guess um, I'm just a little confused and maybe I wasn't listening intently enough, but is this something that an individual could uh, vie for and get food delivered to their house or is this community-based bulk services? Uh, this is gonna be community-based bulk services. Um, the intent from the USDA standpoint is this be basically a uh, truck to trunk type of thing that you know they can go by the individuals will then be able to go by the uh, you know food banks or whatever locations that you know that are identified and pick up these boxes and be able to say I want a dairy product box I want a meat box I want a vegetable box or you know the all the above um, but it, you know, the, the vendors the vendor bidding and that type of thing is to uh, the producers down to the uh, food banks, the faith-based organizations, and any other feeding organizations that you may have. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Great question, Gary. And the one, uh, if I could, the, the one caveat I'd have, you know, over all this, uh, and I think Terry mentioned that in a couple of places they have basically are, are, are already doing something like this. If there's something in place. Um, you know, and it's working, let the state know about that as well. Um, you, you may already have relationships between the producers uh, and the communities that they're already getting those, you know, fresh meats, fresh vegetables, uh, you know, from the, from the fields uh, to the, the, those that are in need. Uh, and if that's something that is working and you don't want to mess with, then I would completely understand. You know, those relationships are important to main, build and maintain. And uh, if they're working, they're working. Don't mess with it. We've got a question here from Marianne. So will the food supply be available through the food banks and then to food pantries? How will the food pantries be made aware? Um, I can't answer that at this point. I don't know how within you, you know, that particular county or within the state that's done. I would defer that to uh, your state ESS 6 contact. I think it's Linda Ponder. Is that correct? Um, but whoever your ESF6 is, I would t talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. And I saw Caitlin shaking her head, uh, but that is correct. Um, wonderful. Any other and questions? Part, yeah, go ahead. And, and part of it too is, you, you know, you guys are able to, you know, to identify where the needs are, uh, much more so than we could on our end. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Any other comments, questions, or concerns for, for Andy? Let's see here. All right, so what I'm going to do at this time is um, we haven't done this since our first week. Um, I want to open the floor up to all of our participants and hear what's going on with your organizations. Um, how are you doing? It's been um, it's been an, a tough time, but also an inspiring and um, meaningful time for our state and for a lot of organizations. And so while there's a lot of need out there, there's also um, a lot of good things happening. So I want to open the floor up to folks for the next um, you know, 10, 15 minutes for us to have a discussion. Um, if you have anything you would like to share, um, whether it's positive stories or shout outs, or if you have any comments, questions, or concerns um, uh, for, for members of the team or requests for assistance, please, uh, this is going to be an open forum um, for you to, to reach our, our constituents um, and, our, and our members and, and people who are here today. Um, so with that, you should be able to unmute yourself. You should be able to share your webcam. Um, and so the floor is yours and I will moderate as best I can. Um, and if you are not able to, um, to share through your microphone, feel free to enter commentary into the chat. Um, and I'll be able to read it out from there. Hey Dave, uh, I'll, I'll start off and then I won't say anything after this, but last week we talked about a, um, a drive-in um, food pickup where people could drive by and people had stations to, and I'm wondering if there's any um, uh, pictures or video from that day that could be sent to me and also um, future food pickups like that. Anything that we're doing, I would love to collect that data and be able then to push it out to any parties that are concerned like our state legislators, but also all the way up the chain to um, uh, federal. Um, I'd like to start collecting that stuff. Um, the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. Gary, uh, with that actually, just so people don't think that you're um, um, just a random person, although you're not, you're an amazing person. Um, do you wanna share a little bit about who you are and, and what you do? <laughs> so they know uh, where that's going to. So I saw this li uh, link for sign in here and I came and visit, no, okay. Um, I am the <laughs> communications officer for Volunteer Mississippi. And um, we respond to, um, well, we report to federal agencies um, but also state uh, legislators and our governor. Um, and we do all kinds of stuff across the board. Most of the people here will know Caitlin and Krista and our organization, uh, Volunteer Mississippi. Um, I kind of hide in the background, but I do like to collect all this information and package it um, so that I can then communicate it up the chain and say, hey, look at all the great stuff that's happening on the ground. Yeah, and it's been it's been incredible. You know, one of the things that we talked about early on was the challenge with volunteerism because so many people who have volunteered in the past um, uh, and who make up a huge base of our volunteer pool are in the most vulnerable population. And so while it took a minute to sort out how people could still continue to serve an important role and, and what that would look like, um, with the support of Volunteer Mississippi and everybody involved across the board, volunteerism has continued and is going strong and um, the stories are just incredible. And so that is both true on the, the pandemic response, but also in response to the, the um, tornadoes and bad weather. And so um, this is a, an incredibly heartening time um, with, with lots of good things to share. Um, and so hopefully we can help uh, balance the scales just a tad. Um, so yes, please, if you do have positive things to share, share them with, with Gary and the team so we can make sure that you and your organization and people who are volunteering get that recognition. Um, and so frankly, I think the community needs positive news. And so as we look at our social media, we try to share those stories um, so that you know people in the public can, can see some positive things happening despite all of the the negative. So um, thank you, Gary and the volunteer team, volunteer Mississippi team for, for helping to collate and aggregate that um, and share that out. Um, let's see here. 
see some comments in the chat. Um, I asked, I see a question for um, how, uh, how is the tornado recovery going? Um, Caitlin or Krista or others, would you mind speaking to some of that effort and, and what's been going on on the ground? Or frankly, if there's a hub director who's also working on that, um, that would be great too. Hey, I can start. Um, so I was typing in the chat box too, but I'll just say some of that information. So we've had probably about 60 unaffiliated volunteers pre-register. Um, we usually try to put up a link um, as soon as a disaster hits for people to pre-register so that we can actually refer those volunteers to opportunities that are created by either response organizations or by local nonprofits. And the reason why we want to do that is to ensure that the volunteers are going somewhere that's ready to organize them. Um, in the case of COVID-19, that they are able to safely deploy volunteers um, and that they have the um, safety equipment, you know, masks, gloves, um, and that they're able to space out volunteers um, so we can comply with CDC regulations. Um, in the past, we have deployed volunteers directly to residents' homes, but we don't, it's not a best practice and we're trying not to do that anymore um, because there's liability involved. You know, we have to protect the homeowners as well as the volunteers. So. Our goal as Volunteer Mississippi, and now that the hub network has been up and running and they may not agree, but they have had some training <laughs> and a lot of them know more than I do at this point. Um, what our effort is, is to register volunteers and deploy them into those organized volunteer opportunities. Um, so, I mean, I think the folks who are in those areas will need help for weeks and months to come, um, as always, with a disaster of this magnitude. But that doesn't mean we need all of the volunteers immediately. <laughs> so that's always the challenge with volunteers is um, when it's on the news, as soon as it happens, we usually get a pretty large response. Um, but the reality is that we need a steady stream of volunteers for many months. And I know the folks in the South Delta, the folks who have seen tornadoes in the last few years can attest to that. So to, there's no easy question, I mean, answer to the question, do you have enough volunteers? Uh, right, right now, we are only able to schedule and place um, a limited number of volunteers at a time so that we can maintain social distancing and so that the work that's organized matches the number of people they need to do it. Um, but I know we will continue to need volunteers um, pretty much constantly. And I think that the hubs are probably the primary place where we would refer volunteers. Um, and the hubs are the ones who really have the pulse on what's going on in their regions. Um, while I've got the floor for a second and we're talking about this, if you are a nonprofit who is responding, whether you're, you know, a VOAD organization, you may not be a um, traditional disaster response organization, but you're a food pantry or, you know, you're getting more calls than usual for services, please feel free to reach out to our hubs and let them know you can take volunteers. Um, we do tend to have a large response and it's kind of, it can be a struggle to place all of those volunteers. So if you could use volunteers, please let your local hub know. Um, they, I'm sure they would be glad to um, send some volunteers your way, um, especially if you're doing disaster work, but any time at all. Um, did that answer the question? I see, I see a couple hey. more. This is Martha Allen again with Extra Table. and We've been Hi. doing some um, pop-up food pantries and feeding in um, storm areas as well. Um, we were in SoSo last week and um, I, I didn't know the, I coordinated with the volunteer coordinator or talked to the volunteer coordinator in that area yesterday. Sure. 
um, and we'll be working through her in the future. But uh, we had connected with a group and they gave us a day and a time and told us their needs. And so it was really fun to, I like direction. I mean, we've got food, mm -hmm. but showing up and creating chaos is just not how Extra Table likes to work. So um, we were asked and told a certain day, a certain time, and how many people to feed. And they were so grateful because we showed up with our minimal manpower, um, Kathy Clem and Good Sam in tow, and um, and did what we needed to do, packed up, got out of there, and left extras. And so um, if there are other places that we need to step up and help out, we're happy to. We'll be headed to uh, Marion County, to Columbia, and to Bassfield um, later this week with some big deliveries. So if there's Wonderful. somebody that wants to tag along or help out or add to or be a part, um, just contact Extra Table. Great. That's amazing. Can you um, speak just to give a little bit of context around um, how you are receiving that enormous amount of um, food and support? I think it's just it'd be interesting to learn about how Extra Table is, is coming upon those resources. Well, you can open up your checkbook right now and write a check. Um, that's how we're getting this food. Um, so Extra Table formed in 2009 by Chef Robert St. John in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And we strictly fundraise in order to purchase new and healthy food that we drop ship to food pantries and soup kitchens the last Wednesday of every month through food distribution partners like Cisco, Benny Keith, and Chow. Um, and in this new COVID crisis, and um, we were rolling out a new plan in July, um, but we are responding in um, new and new, unique ways in order to be nimble and in, the res in our response. So um, we respond in different ways ways for storm victims and we um, do pop-up pantries or cook um, which are our non-traditional methods. Cisco has donated thousands and thousands I think we're over a hundred thousand pounds of food and Kathy Clem and I have a refrigerated truck there in Jackson where we are able to rescue anything and put it on a truck so we can distribute it to our food distribution partners um, but we don't want anything to go to waste on our watch. And literally, we have videos on how to cook veal and mussels coming out because we've got cases and cases of mussels. And for coastal people, they eat that and it's a familiar item. So, but yeah, Extra Table strictly fundraises. But in these times, we are um, pulling out all the stops in order to haul food to the, the most far reaching corners of the state so that people are fed. That's amazing. That's amazing. If people wanted to get in touch, um, is it best for them to go through another organization, say Volunteer Mississippi, or should they reach out to you directly? No, you can reach out to me directly. Um, so we love Volunteer Mississippi and have partnered with them in the past, and I'm working on getting closer to all the hub directors. Um, but we, um, you can contact me directly. My cell phone number I'll put in the chat, and um, my email address is really easy. It's just Martha at extratable.org. Fantastic. Martha, thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. Just amazing. Um, Thanks, it's sweet. Uh, anybody else? Let's let's keep this going. Um, we've got a few minutes left. I see that um, someone posted in the chat that there is a struggle in, um, let me scroll up here. One second. This is what happens every keeps popping things in the chat. It's great. You have to search for it. Um, the Goodwill Industries in the South is challenged but hopeful. Kimberly Hall, would you mind speaking a little bit more about what you mean by that? Or feel free to enter into the chat. Hey everybody, this is Kimberly Massey. Um, I am a consultant working with nonprofit organizations. Um, I focus primarily right now in Central Mississippi, but I do have the pleasure of getting to work with folks across the state. Back at Christmas, I worked with 19 charities to um, promote and help them promote what they're doing for Giving Tuesday, which is kind of a national day of giving on social media, if you're not familiar with it. We had a lot of success um, and we are going to do that again. And this summer, we are going to be taking into consideration the effects that COVID-19 have had has had on everyone. And so we're gonna be spending a couple of days really giving credit and paying honor to the people who really make our communities work. Um, 
everything from what we traditionally would consider honoring around the 4th of July, like first responders and military, but we'll also be talking about the wonderful people who've gone into work every day to the restaurants and to grocery chains and gas stations and continue to make our life bearable. We will also um, thank some of the non-traditional people that often are left out like volunteers, the folks that you guys work with and we work with, and people like our caregivers. Um, I know many of you probably have someone in your life who is helping care from, for someone who often doesn't get thanks. So we really just want to highlight the people in our lives who make it better and let it be an effort, not just for charities, but the whole community to share the same message. Um, and one reason for that is because you hear a commercial about State Farm saying thank you, and you hear WJTV saying thank you, but we really want to give everybody in our communities a chance to say the same message and say, hey, we've gone through this together and we can grow through this and we are one community and we really can be there for each other. So, um, so we're putting this together. We're gonna spend the next couple months um, working hard to increase the number of people who wanna share that same message over um, 4th of July weekend. And then the last day, which is a Tuesday, the 7th, we will be um, doing a social media opportunity for people to give to charities that are meaningful to them. This is available for any charity registered with the Secretary of State and any business or community organization can participate in getting the word out or they can get the word out and participate even further. So th this excludes really nobody. Um, I'd love for folks to participate. That's what we're doing this summer. And then we will do just traditional Giving Tuesday at Christmas. This is just a pro bono service that we offer um, as a collaboration between nonprofits and as a way to provide technical assistance to help folks get their social media where it can be um, working for them. So really that's it, Dave. Any, anything else or anything I can answer for anyone? I think I think with our time given, Kimberly, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna say thank you uh, for sharing that. Um, I do want to give a few more announcements, um, and that's amazing. And thank you for for doing that work and making sure that the stories and the work of our volunteers and community are getting lifted up. Um, again, it's just incredibly important. Um, so with that, I do want to make some announcements. Uh, next week, you'll see a distribution um, from the Alliance of our May training calendar. Um, we have some amazing courses coming your way. Uh, I'll go ahead and read uh, off the list now. Um, we'll have two per week. Um, one is telling your story in times of crisis. Uh, another is human resources in times of crisis, fundraising with social media, managing new realities, part one and part two, basic grant strategies, part one and part two, and social intelligence and self-management. Um, and so these are going to be incredible. They're going to be running throughout the month. Um, and so you will be able to um, register for those uh, starting next week. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled in your email box for those coming out um, and check the Alliance website, alliancems.org. And with that, I also want to announce a new pricing structure um, for our trainings. So um, for those of you who have not participated before, um, in the past we've had non-member and member pricing. Um, we are now going to have one singular price, and this is just for during COVID. We know that a lot of organizations are struggling financially right now, are, but are looking for really great content. Um, and so we have not only tried to simplify the process, but also reduce our costs and re not re our, reduce our costs, reduce your costs. Um, and so our, um, our courses are going to be one price, uh, for non-members and members, and they're going to be greatly reduced. So if you sign up or any member of your team, you sign up for one course, one training, it is only $25. If you sign up for two, uh, they are $20 a piece. And if you sign up for three, they're only $15 a piece. So that means that you could get almost six hours of training webinars for $45. 
Um, we are really trying to make this accessible for, for you and hopefully members of your team. Um, so please, please um, reach out and, and register. These are going to be taught by amazing trainers um, who are just phenomenal in their respective fields. Um, so that is coming uh, soon. Again, check out the Alliance website, alliancems.org. Um, check out our YouTube channel where you'll see um, our webinars, both uh, this one and our previous webinars, our resource data bank um, on the Google Drive, which I shared. And lastly, uh, just as a reminder that we have our support request form. And so any organization who would like to sign up for free consultation on a variety of issues can do so. The, uh, the link to that form is in the resource drive. Um, and you can sign up for any number of consultations. There are about 10 topics right now, um, and you will be in a group no larger than 10, so you can get some individualized attention. Um, that will be running uh, for about the next month, um, and we actually have some starting next week, so thank you to those who've already signed up, um, and we look forward to having many more. Uh, I think yesterday I got 10 to 12 new form applications. So they are, they're rolling in. Um, so take advantage. Um, with that, thank you all for taking the time to be here. Um, we love doing this weekly webinar and we hope that this is incredibly valuable um, to all of you. Thank you, Andy and Terry for, for sharing today and being our presenters. And of course, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, um, you can always reach me at dave.miller at alliancems.org. Stay safe um, and have a wonderful rest of your week, y'all. Take care.